the Soviet Union collapsed, their military quickly declined as well. Their defense budget decreased from $629 billion in 1988 to only $122 billion in 1995. With such immense budget cuts, its military personnel went unpaid, dozens of ships rusted in port or were scrapped, and its air force went into disrepair. Things improved over the last decade before again facing budgetary cuts with a huge drop in the price of oil in early 2016. Today, Russia's military is a tiny fraction of what it once was during the Cold War. Its total active enlisted went from over 4 million in 1990 to less than 1 million today. The largest problem with rebuilding Russia's military into a modern superpower is money. The Russian economy just cannot support it. The total GDP of Russia is 15 times smaller than the United States. Russia simply cannot afford the military it once had. However, there are several things Russia can do to regain some of its lost glory. In order to project power across the globe, Russia needs bases in which it can use as a staging point. Currently, most Russian military bases abroad are in countries that were part of the Soviet Union. One of the exceptions is in Syria. Russia recently set up a naval base at Tortoise and also an air base near Latakia in Syria. In 2017, they signed an agreement with Syria that gives them lease of these bases for the next 50 years. With these bases, Russia now has better access to project power into the Middle East, the Mediterranean, and by extension through the Suez Canal out into the Indian Ocean. While this gives them access to every ocean, it is still well behind the Soviet Union, who have bases throughout Africa and as far away as Cuba. For Russia to become a global superpower, they will need to be able to project its power farther out across the world. A way Russia can make up for its lack of overseas bases is with aircraft carriers. Russia currently only has one operational carrier, the Admiral Kuznetsov. The Kuznetsov is an old, steam-powered carrier. It is much smaller than its American counterparts, as it can only carry about half as many aircraft. The Kuznetsov has had a lot of problems, with engine issues, fires breaking out on board, equipment breaking down, and several aircraft crashing. Everywhere it goes, it sails with a tugboat in case it breaks down. It is beginning to show its age and will need to be replaced. Russia recently began work designing the Project 23000E, which would be the Russian Navy's first supercarrier, comparable in size and capacity to the American Nimitz carriers. However, it appears as if the new carriers have been cancelled, or at least put on hold due to budgetary issues. Another issue is that the large shipyard that built all the Soviet Union-era aircraft carriers, including the Kuznetsov, is in the Ukraine, a nation that is no longer friendly with Russia. Russia itself does not have a shipyard large enough to build a supercarrier. It is also doubtful that Russia has the expertise to build such a large carrier. These are a few of the several issues Russia will need to resolve in order to produce a replacement for the Kuznetsov. Another issue facing the Russian military currently is its lack of well-trained manpower. Russia still relies heavily on conscription to fill its ranks. All men when they reach the age of 18 are required to serve one year in the Russian military. The vast majority of conscripts return to civilian life after the year. This constant turnover results in the lack of professionalism and highly trained troops. Alcohol consumption is also another major problem in Russia as well. Russians consume more alcohol per person than most countries in the world, and it has had an effect on its military as well. Russia needs to address these issues in the future in order to field a more powerful and formidable army. Hypersonic cruise missiles will become more and more prevalent in the future. Russia, India, China, and the US are currently working to develop these weapons. A hypersonic missile's main advantage is its speed. These missiles will fly about 10 times faster than modern cruise missiles like the Tomahawk. This speed greatly reduces the amount of time an enemy can react and defend itself before impact. Other advantage is that they are much smaller, more mobile, and can be launched from any platform, including aircraft, compared to ballistic missiles. Russia is currently already working on a hypersonic missile called the 3M22 Zircon. It is not known exactly how far along the missile is in development. There have reportedly been several flight tests but the Americans have also made a couple hypersonic test vehicles and flew them several years ago. We know that the Americans ran into several problems, notably the difficulty controlling the vehicle at such great speeds. If Russia has been able to overcome these problems, the missile will prove to be a very valuable weapon, as only the best top-of-the-line surface-to-air missiles can actually defend against it. Having such a missile will help compensate for Russia's other military shortfalls due to the smaller budget. 
These are just a few of the many ways the Russian military needs to improve its forces in order to regain an advantage. Without these, Russia risks falling behind other world powers.